Welcome to 7.13's Math Moment. Today's students continue to work with metric conversions and also customary system conversions to change and convert um, between different units of measurement. So I'm um, looking at the couple of helpers that we have here. Um, this is the King Hector or King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk acronym that students um, use quite a bit to remember the order that the metric system goes um, in from largest to smallest unit. And it's really important for them to have that written somewhere on their paper when they're working on their homework um, or when they're taking a test, you know, encourage them to do that because it does really give them a nice visual and reference to make sure that they're going the right direction and that also that their answer makes sense and is reasonable. So an easy one to remember and to use. And then this one here we will use for the first problem, we call it the big G. And what it shows is that this large G represents one gallon. And in one gallon, there are four quarts, which are represented by the Q's. There are two pints in every quart, which means that there are eight pints in a gallon. And then there are two cups in every pint, which means that there are four cups in a quart and 16 cups in a gallon. So it gives you a lot of information just in that one small drawing um, that we learned in fifth grade and then we'll use again in sixth grade this year. So let's go ahead and get started. Example one says, Charles is filling a 40 gallon fish tank. How many cups of water will he use? So I want first to notice what I have. I have 40 gallons. And then I want to focus on what do I want to know? I have, this is what I have. I want to know how many cups will that be? So 40 gallons is equal to how many cups? So again, as we referenced in um, Lesson 7.12, a really nice handy way for students to remember whether they need to multiply or divide is to take whatever unit of measure they're in. Um, up here with metric, it's already done for them. Um, but if they're working here with the customary system, all they need to do is to put the largest unit first. So in this case, that would be gallons. And then work their way down. So we'd have gallons, quarts, pints, and then cups, all right? And then what I get to do is just start with where what I have. I have gallons, so that's where I'm gonna start, and then move to what I want. So I want cups. I'm moving this direction to get from gallons to cups, so I know that that's going to be a multiplication problem. So again, to set up that helper, you just draw arrows going um, opposite directions. Those units of measure are going from largest to smallest, that's very important times at the top, division at the bottom. So we are going to multiply 40 times something. The something part comes in with the big G. If I'm working with gallons and cups, I have to figure out how many cups are in one gallon, and that will help me know what to multiply my 40 gallons by. So all I have to do is count up the C's, which I know there's two, four, six, eight, 10, 12, 14, 16. So now all I have to do is multiply 40 times 16. 6 times 0 is 0, 6 times 4 is 24. I'm done with my 6, so I include a placeholder. 1 times 0 is 0, 1 times 4 is 4. When I add these amounts, I'm going to get the answer of 640 cups. So using both of the helpers there, I was able to take what I have, 40 gallons, and figure out what I need um, to figure out how many cups it was. Example two says each student needs 50 grams of Play-Doh for a science experiment, and there are 30 students in the class, so how many hectograms of Play-Doh are needed? So this is asking me to do a couple of different things because I know that I've got 30 students in class, and they all need 50 grams each. Well, that's gonna be a lot of grams, so then they want us to convert that to hectograms. So we're gonna just do one step at a time, and first I'm gonna find out how many total grams do I need. So if I have 30 students and they each, each is a really big um, multiplication or division word, um, if they each need 50, I know I'm gonna be multiplying 30 times 50. Well, zeros I could just take off and put down below, and then I just have three times five left, which is 15. So I know that I need 1,500 grams. 
Now, the tricky part with two-step problems is that a lot of students want to be done with this first part of the answer. So always encourage them to go back and see, did you really answer the question that was being asked? Because the question says how many hectograms of Play-Doh are needed, and right now I have how many grams are needed. So I need to change 1,500 grams into hectograms. And the way that I do that is by using my metric system chart, which shows me King Henry doesn't usually drink chocolate milk to help me remember the different units of measure in the metric system. So I always start with what I have, and I just have plain old grams, not centigrams, decigrams, they're just the plain old basic unit grams. So I get to start right here in the middle. I want to move to hectograms, so I'm going to be moving to the left one, two spots. So, we always have a decimal at the end of a whole number, and it's important, and it's very simple, just to move that decimal the same amount of spaces, the same direction that you moved when you counted up the spots. So all I have to do is move my decimal one, two spots to the right to make the answer 15 for the amount of hectograms. And then you could really think about, does that make sense? Um, if I've got more grams than I do hectograms, um, it does make sense because hectograms are larger amounts, so I would have a smaller number of them because they are worth more. If you have any questions about conversions or anything in this unit, make sure to see your math teacher.